Hi there, welcome. My name is Juliana Hawk and I help people who may or may not have been diagnosed with ADHD and I help you go from suffering to feeling in control and productive. Welcome to Easy ADHD. And so for today we are discussing ADHD and sleep. And to have this conversation, I invited Alex High to be here. So a little bit about Alex High. Um, he is an author, ADHD coach, and creator of content that inspires himself and others. He was diagnosed with the predominantly inattentive type of ADHD at the age of 20. This led him down a long and windy journey that resulted in Alex founding Reset ADHD in 2018. Reset ADHD offers one-on-one -on -one coaching, blogs, courses, community communities and improv workshops for those with ADHD. Alex is also the author of several books on ADHD, all of which can be found on Amazon. Welcome, Alex, and thank you for being here. Did I miss anything in your intro? I think so. I think that's what I sent to you, so. Wonderful. So, you know, um, Alex and I had a previous conversation of topics about ADHD that we both love to chat about and something that came into um, comment aligned with sleep. And another uh, um, something Alex and I have in common is we are both, we were both diagnosed in attentive ADHD type, which is kind of cool to be, you know, in our element with another person that is just like us. So just for our listeners, you were never alone and you're not broken. You know, there are more of us ADHDers out there just just, you know, sometimes we have to just ask and, you know, put our ask a question and it always comes out. But thank you, Alex, for being here. Um, if it's okay with you, we'll get started on a fun question. All right. Something that comes up a lot in conversation with coaching and just in the general public of people waking up in the middle of the night and not being able to fall back to sleep. And mm. just wanted to curious if that has shown up for you. And if so, what did you do? So it's shown up for me in times of stress, mm. I was going through a really bad breakup. Um, I think this was before I even started coaching. Yeah, it was. And I would wake up in the middle of the night thinking about her and I couldn't fall back asleep. But I was listening to a podcast at the time called Sleep With Me. Sounds a little dirty, but it's not sexual. It's, it's just a guy telling stories that are interesting enough to get your attention but not so interesting that it energizes you. So it hits that kind of sweet spot, I feel like. So I would play that all night. And still to this day, I play it all night in case I wake up in the middle of the night and can't fall back asleep. So generally when we wake up in the middle of the night and can't fall back asleep, our mind is racing, especially for those of us with ADHD. So it's being able to turn down those thoughts and just have something you can focus on that will not energize your brain. I just love how you said that. So you, your exact words were turn down your thoughts. So it sounds like this hypnotize or hypnotizing of the words works for you or hearing mm -hmm. repetitive words. Is there anything else that helps you turn down those thoughts or turn down? Uh, just generally deep breathing. Um, it, it slows you down. It gets your thoughts calmer because when your your thoughts are racing your breathing will change and if you can change your breathing that can slow down your thoughts and just simply focusing on your breath can kind of lull you back to sleep yeah so i do the very exact same thing and i actually visualize a record stop playing so i actually hear of the record stopping and then i count like five breaths and then I, or I'll exhale. It's really interesting. Whatever will catch my attention on how many breaths are counting wise. Um, like, so for instance, I'll breathe in for five seconds and I'll exhale for six seconds or whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But, um, but anyways, do you, when you mentioned breathing, do you also use that technique to help you fall asleep? initially at the start of the night um the podcast i do um the breathing it's only if i feel the need to um because generally the podcast can put me to sleep by itself 
Um, but the breathing sometimes comes in if I am, you know, struggling to kind of calm down. Um, like I, the other thing is I've got sleep apnea, so I've got a CPAP machine over my mouth and nose. And so just having that, like sometimes you kind of have to adjust to wearing that and really focusing on your breath can kind of help adjust to that. Oh my gosh, I have so much empathy right now because that's that's a small weight on your mat on you, right? The the machine. I mean, it's not super heavy. Like I'm used to it by now, and I also know that I sleep much better when I'm wearing it. Like before, I got diagnosed with sleep apnea. And this is probably jumping ahead in the conversation. I was like super super tired all the time. Now that I've got a CPAP machine, I'm more energized throughout the day. I can be more present throughout the day. And so knowing that is enough motivation for me to wear the CPAP machine. This is so inspiring for me. So you experience low energy and you sought out help. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. This is like a big deal because this is like self-discovery, self-awareness, and it's, you know, at its core. And it's great for listeners to hear this because it's the start of building that self-actualization of what's in our way. So you had a hard time sleeping. So what, what was the first step to getting help? For the sleep apnea? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> complaining. Um, so I, I just kind of, noticed I was just so tired in a way I had never felt before and you know I mentioned it to a few people and some were like oh you're, you just need to do this or do that and blah, 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 blah. Um, but finally it just got to the point where I was so frustrated with myself for being tired and it was just like okay kind of brought me back to when I got diagnosed with ADHD and was struggling with a whole host of other things but it was just like okay i can let this get to me or i can do something about it so that's when i went to my doctor he initially was going to prescribe me uh sleep medication and i kind of stopped him because i knew a bit about sleep medication and how they're not really the first line treatment anymore um and i just said hold on a sec i want to figure out why i'm so tired all all the time and he goes oh okay yeah let's get you set up with a sleep study. So I had a sleep study done, had to do it over again because there's a malfunction with equipment and yeah, but now I'm diagnosed with sleep apnea. And did that open up doors for you? Um, it opened up. Define what you mean by doors. So by being able to have this new diagnosis were you able what else opened up for you uh everything um it's 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 hard to like pinpoint what exactly it was that it opened up for me it was just better sleep and sleep is just so foundational to our health and our wellness so and I knew that because I had read a book called, it's by Matthew Walker. Um, is it Why We Sleep or something like that? But anyway, it's it's a book on sleep by Matthew Walker. And it changed my life when I first read it or listened to the audiobook book rather. Um, but yeah, so I knew all the things about how important sleep is. And so I started making changes and that's, and that's when I noticed I was super tired all the time. Hmm. And so just being able to know that about myself, okay, I've got sleep apnea. I can take steps to better protect my sleep. I, for a while, I was super strict with my bedtime. Um, over time, you know, that ADHD thing of not being able to stick with it. I sometimes get caught on my phone late at night, but I know the importance of sleep. I know that I just work better, work better um, with sleep, with more sleep. So if I've got a big day or something like that, I, I need to make sure I'm well rested for the big day. 
So what it opened up for me was just learning more about myself and how I best operate. Yes, and I absolutely love how you said your words were better protect my sleep. I think it's a beautiful, simply, it should be like an album, like a title of a song of this is how I protect my sleep. I think it's beautifully said. Oh, thank you. And um, something else I really liked what you said, you know, I do a lot of reading. You said mind treatment. I'm just a little curious of uh, where this word, uh, did you coin this term mind treatment yourself or where did this co- word come up for you or mind treatment? I I have no idea. I have no recollection saying that. Yeah. Um, but like you've got your brain, you've got your mind. And I know the ADHD coach training program we both went through kind of distinguishes between the two. Like there's brain health and there's mind health. Um, Brain health is, you know, exercising, eating well, kind of feeding your brain with good things. Mind health, I feel like is more getting the support you need, whether that's therapy, coaching, both, whatever you need in order to support that mind. What did I say? Mind treatment? Correct. Yeah, again, sometimes things pop out of my mouth and I have no recollection of saying them, but. I think it was really well said. That's why I pointed it out. Okay. (laughs) And, you know, this is, uh, this also came up for me um, when I was learning more about the gut. Not, I'm not jumping into sleep and also gut, but I just didn't also realize, you know, how many brains we do have to be mindful and do treat every day, you know? That Mm. being, like you said, the brain and our mind, because if we need to exercise our engine and our passion or ADHD is going to get the best of us. Mm -hmm. And um, that being said, it's, um, you know, how can we be able to function at our best? Like when we don't have ADHD, I know that's not possible for us, but it's Mm. like, sometimes I tell myself, if I were to get enough sleep, I could actually function like who I want to be, like who I am while I'm medicated, but without medication of mm-hmm. just being fully present because I had enough sleep that I eat, that I get my exercise. It all back uh, comes back down to interest and that motivation level and that, mm-hmm. uh, that momentum level. But um, it, um, another thing with sleep is it's very unpredictable. Um, something I just wanted to bring up is just how inconsistent um, sleep can be. And even you even mentioned medication of, you know, your doctor said or mentioned. So I even took the route of trying medication and with the um, the nationwide shortage with um, Adderall, I had to completely stop my sleep medication because without Adderall to help offset the side effects of sleep medication, Mm -hmm. I had to, so I had to relearn what sleep meant for me. Um, And, you know, when you even said like having like a calm down routine to get to bed on time, it was also really hard for me because my inattentive self really comes alive at 10 o'clock at night. (laughs) Mm. It's actually really impressive how much my mind will wander at 10 and 11 o'clock at night. And I don't mean for it to like it wanders like I was in physics class in high school. That's how like I an hour could go by and I don't know what I did. But that's the only time during the day that I feel my mind wander. So mm. do, do you experience that the um the inattentiveness of the daydream right before bed? Yeah. Um, one of the reasons I have that podcast I listen to is because my mind will go, it'll replay things from the day. A big thing I've done since I was little is also like, what's going to happen for me in the future and imagining scenarios that haven't happened and will probably never happen. Oh, wow. Big, huge. That ha- comes up for me too. Or like such things I don't want to forget to say the next day. So like I overthink it for hours replaying that soundtrack because I don't want to forget it. I can't stand it when that happens, but it sounds like that could happen for you too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it happens. Um, you know, my podcast only releases episodes twice a week. So most nights I'm listening to an episode I've already heard mm. or I've heard the beginning of anyway. 
So like sometimes it's, oh, this one again. So when I'm about to go to bed, I try and find an episode that's really going to interest me at that time. Um, so I'm not so focused on the thoughts that can swirl and kind of get me energized. I want to focus on the thing that's going to calm me down and get me ready to fall asleep. Mm. It's a lot easier said than done. Mm-hmm. It, it takes experimentation. Like this podcast works for me. I'm not saying it's going to work for everyone. In fact, the guy who hosts the podcast says it's not for everyone. And he's got a link on his website um, of other options if his podcast doesn't work for you. Oh, that's really sweet and comp- oh, I'm kind of that of him. I'm looking forward to trying out this podcast. Um, would it be okay if I bring up another topic? Actually, one of my clients wanted me to bring up with you. Okay. <laughs> so she, I, I'm on, my client said, what if I am understimulated to go to bed? How do I stimulate my brain to go to bed? Mm. And my initial reaction was I had to rethink to myself what is stimulation and understimulation because for me, I did not want to be stimulated to go to bed. I won't be able to sleep. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm just curious if you had anything to say about that one. Yeah. So what's coming to me in the moment, and this is just pure speculation, not knowing anything about your client. Um, I've got... Um, If you're understimulated during the day, you're probably going to be understimulated at night. So if you can do things to stimulate you in the hours leading up to bed, that can take away that need for stimulation at night, potentially. And then the other thing I'll say is make sleep enticing. Like being tired is is one thing, but so many of us will continue to scroll on the phone or watch TV when we're super tired, whether we have ADHD or not. So, but if you can look forward to sleep, that's gonna like be that drive, that momentum, that stimulation to get into bed. So um, creating the right sleep environment is gonna be key. So you can, Buy fancy sheets, buy a new bed. I think the National Sleep Foundation says like every seven years you need a new bed. That depends on the mattress and how how you rotate it and everything like that. But having just luxury sleep items to make it nice and cozy and you're in the right mood and you just, oh, I can't wait to go to bed. That might drive your client to get into bed. I am. I uh, can also say I recently bought a pink checkered fuzzy blanket, and that has been exciting me to get into bed. And I actually cover my head. Um, I didn't un- know this about myself, but I am very um into my. I'm affected by all eight sensories. Um, but so when uh, um so when I'm in bed, I have this cozy blanket over me. I am so at peace with myself. Mm. So, like sometimes, like I really lo- I want to hear from my client, like what is comfortable for you? What makes you feel in your zen? You know, you know, is, are you touching something or is it listening? Like you said, how can we turn um like get into tune with our senses to help us like leverage our environment? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's just everything can affect us when we have ADHD because we're we're so aware of everything going on around us that if things aren't the way we want them, it can distract us and make us hyper focus on the thing we don't like. And that prevents sleep. 100 percent. it's also that's coming up for me is the rigid thinking of the rigid what has to be how can we reframe this to be something doable for us yeah instead of thinking oh it's got to be this way i get to do this i have the ability to do this it's freeing to do this um so like what's coming to mind to me is sleeping in a hotel 
I can't have the same sleep environment that I have at home. It's just no hotel is set up like my bedroom. So what do I need to do to recreate it as best as possible? Um, and sometimes having just the difference can be interesting. But I tend to focus on the negative because we all have a negativity bias. But I'm thinking ahead to when I will be sleeping elsewhere in the future. And and there there are things that I do to sort of recreate the environment. And there are things I do that, you know, I just accept. Um, and I I could get upset about not having it perfect, but that doesn't help me. So I I've learned to let go of some things like um, when I'm at home, I've got a bed that kind of tilts up. That's supposed to help me with my acid reflux. When I'm, <clears throat> when I'm not at home, I don't have beds that have that incline or vertical movement that I, I can have at home. And so I, I kind of prop myself up on pillows, but it's not the same. So I, I just deal with it. That sounds kind of unfun, but like, there are some things you just have to accept. It's not going to be perfect. And I do feel that sleep has been one of the harder, um, let it go. It doesn't need to be perfect as, um, because you want it to be, it's especially if it's in our control and, you know, it's our own sleep or like, so I hear what you're saying. And I do think a lot of things in life just have to be, you just have to do it. Mm -hmm. And, and with sleep, you can want it to be perfect. You can strive for perfection, but is that really helping you? Because I used to be super strict super, super strict about my sleep and I got to be in bed at this time. I got to have this environment. I got to do this, this, this. But it's so hard to get that. Mm -hmm. And if you're so focused on getting it perfect, you're getting worked up around bedtime. And that doesn't help you fall asleep. So it's about finding the balance between having things the way you want them and accepting what is. I talked earlier about getting a new mattress. Mattresses are expensive. So it may not make financial sense for you to go out and spend a bunch of money on your sleep. Now, what I will say about that is if you can do so, and if you think you can't, double check that can't. Because do you need all those TV channels? Do you need the latest iPhone? Um, you can save money elsewhere so that you can splurge on things that are foundational to your health. Preach. Um, I also recently just got two of uh, uh, great pillows from Sam's Club for $19 and the, they all had a, an, an option for $12, but I chose the hotel collection and it makes the world a difference. And yes, I love that you said double check that can't. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, that can't because sometimes we, our ADHD talks to us and we don't realize it is, especially mm -hmm. for our new listeners who are just starting their self-discovery process. Um, but something I really want to talk about because we're coming to an end, but I wanted to say, I love that your passion for transitions of getting yourself interested into that was easy. Oh, let's, let's click the button to transition. So I can clearly tell you've had a lot of work around getting yourself excited to do the next thing. And has there been anything uh, along your self-discovery journey that has helped you get excited for the next thing mm. um i think it's a matter of finding the joy in what's coming up next because let's say you've got a doctor appointment who wants to go to the doctor nobody 
right? But if you remind yourself, oh, this is how I'm going to get better. This is how I'm going to be healthier. Then that's going to be the thing. Like, I don't want to go to the doctor. But if I'm super tired all the time, I need to do something in order to not be tired all the time. So I went to my doctor. Um, like, I go to the chiropractor pretty much every other week. And I know if I don't do that, my back is going to suffer just because I've got a wonky back and for whatever reason, it can act up on me. But if I'm going to the chiropractor regularly, I feel much better. So it's about finding the motivation within that thing. Bookkeeping. I hate bookkeeping. How do I get that done? Well, for one thing, I say, I'm going to do it on Friday. And I do it on Friday. And I don't ever do it on a Monday. Just because, like, that's the day I picked. And the motivation behind doing the bookkeeping is, for one thing, feeling like a good business owner. Uh, I'm a business owner. There are certain things I have to do. Otherwise, I'm just a guy who sits in a spare bedroom in his house all day. <laughs> um, actually, I, I have a standing desk now, so I don't sit. But anyway, um, yeah, it's just about figuring out, okay, what's the thing that's going to get me to do it? What about it isn't awful? And sometimes it's pairing it with something. Um, there's a TV show I only watch while exercising. Does it take the sting off of exercising completely? No. But it's it's makes it less awful. I love that show. And I want to watch it quite frequently. But if I only allow myself to watch it while exercising, that gives me motivation to exercise. So you can pair it with something or you can find the joy in it. Or both. And, you know, it's hard, you know, when I, especially in a coaching session, most of the time our clients always know why it brings them joy, but they forget. Mm -hmm. So that's when like most of the time they do have to do some field work, not all the time, but just to remember what about this thing or experience or event brought you joy and how can we remember that? So um, that's a really great thing. What you said and habits or, you know, it's um, pairing things together. I love pairing things um, with my coffee in the morning. I'm not mm. a coffee drinker, but I love coffee creamer. So I like, I'll <laughs> do something and I, I can do something for 15 minutes drinking coffee. So um, just a little low barrier to fruit or entry to, to um, try something new is how can I do something for 10 minutes while I do it with some. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. And so is there anything about sleep that you're dying to share with our listeners that we didn't get to cover? Um, short answer, no. Longer answer is I've got a whole course on sleep. So if you go to resetadhd.com slash courses, I believe, you can take my online course, go at your own pace, start whenever, and, you know, whenever you get through it. I do drip it out so you're not doing it all at once. But I've got a sleep course. Um, I really am proud of it. So I pull, I threw basically everything that I can think of on sleep into that course. So if you're looking to transform your sleep, resetadhd.com. And can you tell us about your course? Is it, you know, demo instructions? Are you educating us about sleep? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So how it goes is, I've got a video for each lesson and each lesson has a transcript. So if you 
want to just read, you can. If you want to watch a video, you can. You can have the video playing while you read through the transcript. And then at the end of every lesson, I've got an optional guided journal for you to get you thinking about what you can do differently in your life to transform your sleep. And that's and that's that's kind of key with my course is I'm not giving you a prescription. I'm giving you things to think about, things that might inspire you to take action, to make changes. But I'm also giving you little tips along the way that are things that you could possibly do. I've even got a sleep formula in that course. So I love that. And so it sounds like your course was, is the, is you keep mentioning the word foundational. It sounds like the foundational of your sleep experience and you're bringing all of your years of sleep experience to this course. It sounds like. Correct. And I, I think that's very useful for any, uh, for our listeners, especially with ADHD, because a lot of, I preach this all the time, ADHD is under the surface and we don't realize it's happening to us and for mm. us. So sometimes like I, Alex's course would be a very great place to start to learn more about your ADHD and sleep to help you ease into getting sleep into your life. And something I've been doing, you know, my last most recent year, especially running my biz, small business is instead of looking, um, I used to resist sleep all the time. Uh, I'm a very excited person, especially at midnight. Don't know what I'm excited about, but I'm excited about my inattentive self. The thoughts are wild at midnight for me. Like my medication's clearly worn off, but um, in a sense where, you know, learning gu these guided materials from Alex could really help you refocus to get you refocused to get back on track for sleep. So um, another thing for me was to count down how many hours of sleep I can actually get has really helped me oh, okay, I need a minimum of six hours. If I get to bed minimum by 11, I'll be functional the next day. So for me, kind of playing the math game of this is the minimum, bare minimum, you have no choice. This is what you have to do. Um, but I can't do anything if I wake up in the middle of the night. So all I can do is give myself the tool to get to sleep on time, but I can't predict if I'll sleep the whole night. Mm -hmm. And again, I'll try my best to be calm and patient and give myself the kindness and compassion and the trust and safety when I wake up at 2 a.m. and can't fall back to sleep. So at the end of the day, I'm my own best friend at that lonely 2 a.m. hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. You have to be kind to yourself when you wake up at 2 a.m. Because if you get down on yourself, well, that's just going to make it harder to fall asleep. Absolutely. And um, the scrolling um, you mentioned earlier, like you could just go on your phone. I've been hearing more about this, you know, on the internet of just the hyper focus of scrolling. I I used to be a culprit of this at two in the morning and then two hours would go by and I wasn't even watching anything educational that I liked. I just kept saying, oh, 10 more posts and then I'll be done. I'll go to sleep. Well, 10, 10, 10 more posts later, 100 posts later, I'm still awake. So I would even play that game of, okay, okay, 10 posts. So it's like sometimes of just putting your mind at rest. <laughs> so that was a little added mm -hmm. right there. Sorry. Yeah. And, and like, I've got my sleep podcast playing on my phone, but I've got my phone across the room Good. so that I'm not tempted to just pick it up and scroll. Oh, that's, um, I'm going to, I have not tried that. I keep telling myself, what if I could just leave my phone here and just not touch it for some reason that gives me anxiety having my phone across the room. I don't know why it does. Mm. So I just say, what if I, cause I think I'm nervous. I'm going to miss the alarm or not know what time it is, but I do think like I should just try that. <laughs> I'm going to try it. Just having my phone across the bed room and see. How and that's the other thing. Try something. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it works great. But if it doesn't work, oh, well. I just love that. I love how you said, try something. You said something else earlier. I get to double check that can't. I just love how you're changing your perspective of being able to do something. So thank you, Alex. Yeah. And I hope 
that our listeners, you know, you can hear us two ADHD coaches talking and how we talk to ourselves. And hopefully you guys can develop this language for yourself. You know, that Alex has been in this career much longer than me, but, you know, reflecting what we say and learning from the best can really help you advance your ADHD. And I do. Um, so thank you so much for being here, Alex. Alex, can you please share with everyone how they can get in touch with you? Uh, yeah, the easiest way is just resetadhd.com. There's a contact form on there and then links to all my social medias. If you're on the social media, at Reset ADHD. And so thank you. And um, I'll also have this in the show notes. And for me, you can reach me at easyadhdcoaching.com. And I'm also changing my Instagram handle to be easyadhdcoaching. So I'm converting Juliana Evolves to easyadhdcoaching. But thank you all for being here. And thank you more, Alex, for being here. Until next time, everybody.